Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Colin Wright. And I'm Nathan Tillahun. This year, homecoming will look a little different. Moving to the football field instead of the gym. Tickets will be again sale one to two weeks before the dance. The final, the final like finalization for dance bids is we will not have dance bids due to COVID, and we just there's not like an efficient way to track it, and it's just we don't want it to get too out of hand. For more on homecoming dance bids, tune into next week's Eye of the Tiger. Over the past few weeks, the quarantine policy has been changing for what it once was. We go to Joshua jones Chamel with more on the story. RHS has initiated a new process of quarantine and testing for the school year. According to Principal Nicholas Richter, the school is taking major steps to enforce contact tracing. Um, let's say we find out about a positive case, all right? So a um, uh, student calls in and says, my student, my parent calls in and says, my student tested positive. Mm -hmm. Then what we do is we, our nurse calls that student and does some contact tracing. Hey, do you have any brothers or sisters? Do you, when you ride to school, do you ride the bus? Do you come in a car? Who do you, who do you ride in the car with? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Who do you hang out with? Who are you really close by? And that creates our first list of what we call close contacts. Contact ranges from within six feet for 15 minutes to direct physical contact. According to Principal Richter, the school is also taking steps to protect other students. Then what we do is we go through that student's schedule and we find out what classrooms they were in and where they were sitting. And then we determine that six foot circle in each of those classrooms and that's the group of students that uh, would be those close contacts would be under quarantine. For this school year, the school will be enforcing two different quarantines for unvaccinated students and those unwilling to disclose vaccine status. A full 10-day quarantine and a shortened 7-day modified quarantine with surveillance testing and other safety measures. Modified quarantine is only an option if everyone is wearing a mask. So that's why we've been so diligent about coming to all your classes and uh, teachers are reporting and if we have people who are, are not doing it consistently and we're following up with it so that we can keep kids in class. Because a modified quarantine means you can still be attending school while you're taking care of monitoring your symptoms, you're getting some surveillance testing done, but you'll be able to be in school while that's happening. Senior Ben Lucia experienced the process firsthand and wonders what would happen if unvaccinated students were to be sent home. I know there are people who are unvaccinated who had to be sent home, like entirely, and I can't imagine how hard that is because without Zoom, they're kind of just trying to catch up and it's like just being absent every day on a regular school day and it's mandated so they can't do anything about it. That means students will have to rely on Google Classroom and Blackboard for their classroom assignments at home. Fortunately for Lucia, he was able to stay at school. The only challenge to my education, was if I would even call a challenge to my education, was them taking me out of class for like 20 minutes because it literally did not affect me at all. Quarantine policy continues to change with new state mandates. Alongside many other improvements to the Roseville High School campus, water bottle refilling stations have been added to many common areas, such as the cafeteria and auxiliary gym. I think they're really helpful, especially for student athletes, because it's really important to stay hydrated, and a lot of people go through their water really quickly. And now we go to Jackson Hooker with sports. Good morning, and welcome to this Friday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Jackson Hooker. Tonight, Roosevelt's football team travels up Highway 65 to play a 101 Lincoln team, who may be their toughest test yet. I'm expecting a good football team. Uh, they run downhill. They're quite fast. I'm expecting like a good football team because they're a lot better than Rio Linda. The key matchup for tonight will be Roosevelt's run defense versus Lincoln's run game. Led by senior Gabriel Burns, Lincoln has ran for over 100 yards in both of their games against Del Oro and Whitney. Meanwhile, Roosevelt's defense has only allowed 94 total yards in the ground through two games this year. If Russell can slow down Lincoln's run game, there's a good chance they'll move to 3-0 tonight. In other sports news, with high school sports returning to as normal as possible, the Tiger Cage is back. With more on Roseville High School's iconic student section, we go to Ryan Irvine. The Roseville student section has been full of hype students at Roseville football games for several years. The section properly named the Tiger Cage allows students to go crazy for their team, and no one represents that better than the Tiger Cage leaders Max Wiles and Malaya Johnson. I feel like throughout my four years of high school, I've been, you know, known as a hype person. And I feel like that led to me being selected for the Tiger Cage leader. And I bring out my outgoingness and energy to there. So it's a very beneficial. The Tiger Cage leader and me doing it with him was just kind of the perfect 
fit because we tend to match each other's energy when we're around each other. The leaders helped spark school spirit in several students in the Tiger Cage, including junior Parker Hellickson. I think it's pretty insane, especially this year with Max Wiles running it, and especially the Oakmont game. I thought that was honestly the most hyped Tiger Cage we've had in all the years, as at least for me being a student. Junior Braden Runkle feels that things have changed since his beginning years of high school. Freshman year, I was definitely, definitely the back of, this, uh, back of the crowd. Didn't really do much. Now I'm more towards the front, getting more involved. When some students from a different school tried to intervene with the Tiger Cage, Helgson was up for the challenge. About a few weeks ago when he played Oakmont, the Tiger Cage was going insane, and a few kids thought it was funny to come and steal the no zone sign. Uh -huh. already, but you already know Flash was on the dash, and I got that sign back. Represent Roseville. Senior Brennan Bass also thinks that the Tiger Cage has a positive effect on the football players. Really positive impact on the players because it gives us positive energy and it gives us people to try to impress and do good for to make the school proud. The Tiger Cage also hopes to broaden which sports they attend, mostly rival games. Yes, we do. We plan on going to every single home game against Wood Creek for every single sport. So if you play sports, get ready to see us. With the season just getting started, Wiles can't wait for what's to come. Come to the game. Every single one, hope to see you guys there. Tiger Cage will be at all football home games and a few away games this year, with a few additional sports being added in. And that's on your home for Roseville High School Sports, Top Plays Breakdowns More, I Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN, and now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Jackson. The multiplayer reveal for Call of Duty Vanguard dropped earlier this week, and after the reveal of the new tournament game mode, Champion Hill, which left many fans with mixed feelings, this reveal was pretty underwhelming. The most prominent part of the reveal was the showcase of the new destructible environments, which opens up new possibilities for movement around the map. Go, go, go. Nothing else in the reveal has had the same effect as the new gameplay mechanics. For a closer look at the reveal, tune into iTheTigerNews.com. In other entertainment news, coming out this year are some highly anticipated games like Back for Blood and Halo Infinite, as well as some lesser known games like Far Cry 6, Dying Light 2, and Battlefield 2042. And now we go back to news. Thanks, Connor. Distance and hybrid learning last year has led to many obstacles for the peer helping program. We go to Jacob Viapondo for more on the story. COVID restrictions last year forced peer helping to adjust their class structure and discover new ways to resume the class online. This year, peer helping has been able to continue what they started prior to the COVID shutdown. So much better having students back in the class. I come home and I tell my husband that I laugh every day, just being in person. Like, uh, you guys, Roseville High School students are hilarious. You guys are so witty, so you can't capture that in Zoom. During online learning, peer helping attempted to continue running the class normally, just with online versions of what they would have been doing in person. We tried to mirror online everything we do as a class, so we still zoomed into some freshman classes and shared a little bit. We still shared our life stories online, and we tried to convert our team building training games to Zoom games. We called it Zoom building or Zoom building. <laughs> Senior Sergio Vences has noticed that he didn't recognize most of the underclassmen because of Zoom classes last year. And I just thought the real problem was that we, since we didn't have a lot of our cameras on, I didn't get to recognize any of the freshmen, the new freshmen that were doing that class and sophomores. So it was just kind of hard to who these people are. And then they come to talk to me and I'm like, I don't know who you are. Senior Cameron Skinner has observed some restrictions this year, but overall feels it is better than a Zoom setting. There's a few restrictions, like we can't like really like get close and personal with each other, but it's still pretty good. Freshman students will still get introduced to the peer helping class when they host health classes outside. We had moved to Portable 30 just before COVID, and we discovered behind us we have the bleachers here that we're meeting in and we're doing our public speaking out here. So we're going to host our events out here with freshmen because then we can have our mask off as we speak to them. We actually can rig a sound system with some power cords out here. Peer helping is planning to continue with in-person activities and games. That's it for us today on I Have a Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com, and see you next time.